Welcome to Graceville TV. Would you join us in worship in this moment?
Hey, welcome back to Graceville TV. Glad to be here again teaching you on the Kingdom of God. Now, today I've termed or entitled the sermon Kingdom Come. Um, we're going to go deep into understanding what Jesus came to preach and taught. Basically, Jesus' message, His method, and His mandate. So those three things we're going to touch on. Now, the one thing I want you to know is that ideas are actually raw ingredients of concepts. Okay, get this. Ideas are raw ingredients of concept. That means concept is the communication tool for the idea to be presented. 
right? We've been talking about concepts. We've been talking about how people have had the wrong concept of the kingdom of heaven. So there's a miscommunication, okay? Now, <clears throat> for example, I'll give you an example. Like if I was to build a house, uh, I have ideas, right, of how to design the bathrooms, the living room, the heating, the HVAC system, the architectural design of the house, and so on and so forth. So those are ideas, right? But you know what? I have to gather those all ideas in my head, right? It's called my collection of thinking, right? And all these ideas for the project of building the house, which is the subject of the matter, building the house, to communicate it to the builder. So I need to take all these ideas, these raw ingredients of the concept, and then I have to present this concept to the builder. I have to communicate the ideas to the builder. So that's the meaning of concept. Now, God describes himself through the concept of kingdom. The communication of kingdom. Why? Because he is the king of heaven. And for us to fully extend the realm or the domain here on earth, he would have to communicate his concept of kingdom of heaven in the context of kingdom. Concept of kingdom of heaven in the context of the kingdom of heaven. So what are we building? His kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven, right? Now, modern society today though has a tough time understanding God's concept because we are normally a democracy, a republic, a socialist country, on and on, right? And that's the reason why we have a hard time understanding the concept of kingdom. The encoding, I call it, which is the message sent, is correct, okay? But the decoding, which is the message received of the communication is off. Why, you may ask? Because the kingdom is not a religion, and the religion is not a kingdom. We have made God's concept into a religious concept. Right? So when it is actually about his kingdom or rulership of his government, we made it into a religious concept. So I told you concept is communicating ideas. So what are we communicating? We're communicating a religion. And that's where we're off. His concept is about his kingship and kingdom and how we are to be part of the royal family. And that, hence the extension of his kingdom, his invisible kingdom on the visible earth. Amen? So God's original purpose of his concept of creating man and earth was to have an extension of his royal family governing his invisible kingdom on the physical earth. He gave Adam dominion. Remember that? I talked about that many times. To rule, right? Dominion. With authority to rule here on earth, but Adam, however, lost it, right? Now, the word dominion is the same as the word kingdom in the Hebrew language, okay? Pay attention. The word dominion is the same as the word kingdom in the Hebrew language. So, in effect, God first gave Adam a kingdom, right? He is dominion. Let them have dominion. Let him have dominion. Let him have a kingdom, Right? So, in effect, God gave Adam a kingdom. A kingdom is a territory to be ruled over, to have dominion over, to have authority over a realm. So, if God had given Adam a kingdom, what did Adam lose? Well, he, he lost dominion. He lost the kingdom. Okay? The authority over a territory, a realm. That's why Jesus came to give us back the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. God gave the kingdom. Adam lost the kingdom. Jesus came back to give the kingdom to us again. He brought back the concept of the kingdom. Why? Because he needed to communicate the ideas of the Father in heaven through the concept of 
kingdom. Remember, concept is the message to be communicated. Then he gave us the method. What was the method? To repent. That's the method, right? The message was the kingdom, and the method was to repent. Born again by water and spirit. Remember he told Nicodemus about that? Then he gave us a mandate, right? Remember, message, method, and mandate. So he gave us a mandate to go and make disciples of all nations. Once again, exercising the authority God gave Adam that he lost. That same authority Jesus came to reestablish. So when did he do that? When he told Peter and the rest of his disciples, he says, I'm going to give you keys of the kingdom of heaven. Keys. You know what keys are for? For access. Right? Amen? So here's something I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 16, verses 27 to 28 of the NLT. And this is very interesting. You know, many times I've read this and I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Well, today or yesterday, I was sitting in my new place and then all of a sudden I got this revelation. So I want to share this with you. Matthew 16, 27, 28. For the Son of Man will come with His angels in the glory of His Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. This is Jesus talking, by the way. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. What does this mean to you? Probably, uh, I don't know, right? <laughs> A lot of us read this and go, what's he talking about? You know what Jesus was talking about here? Brothers and sisters, are you ready for this? The kingdom is now. The kingdom is now and here. That's why he said, I tell you the truth, some standing right here now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. You can't say that to the present people when He's coming years later, if you think He's only coming years. His kingdom is here. Amen. Kingdom is now. Now, belief, belief is the key to activating authority in the kingdom. Belief unlocks the kingdom. Belief activates dominion. The kingdom is here and now. Now, if you missed this whole entire message, just remember this sentence. The kingdom is here and now. You cannot appropriate something you postpone. When you go, for example, for example when you go to the United States of America from Canada or from India, and you are a citizen of Canada or India, and you go to the USA. Now, when you arrive there and you're standing on the land of the United States of America, are you a citizen of Canada or are you a citizen of the United States of America? Canada, of course, right? Just because you've shifted place does not mean you've lost your citizenship. You don't lose your citizenship because you are somewhere else. Same here on earth. <laughs> You're a citizen of heaven here. Your kingdom starts now. Your kingdom exists now. If you're in the USA, Canada exists now. Right? A citizen has the rights of his kingdom. He is the property of the kingdom of heaven when he believes. For instance, lately we've been reading about the evacuation process in Afghanistan. Um, many people were trying to get out. There was a lot of chaos and things going on, but people were trying to get out, especially citizens of other countries. Why? Because the home kingdom or the home country is responsible for its citizens. A kingdom is not a religion. Nowhere did I read, oh, the church is going to extradite those people, those Christians. 
Huh? Or the Buddhist temple is trying to extradite the Buddhists that are stuck in Afghanistan. No. The countries are airlifting people out because they are, they are citizens of their country. A kingdom is not a religion. A religion is a beautiful way of teaching, but not a kingdom. A kingdom gives you access and rights and privileges. A religion cannot do that. Be a kingdom citizen now. Here's the principle. The kingdom of heaven only works by faith, by believing. If you don't believe, God can't do it. Yeah, you heard me right. John Wesley, many, many years ago, said this. Man cannot without God, and God will not without man. He was on to something. I'll read to you again. Man cannot without God, and God will not without man. So if you continue to believe the kingdom is not here and now, not operational now, you're basically not using your God-given authority here on earth. It cannot work in your life. Then no wonder it doesn't manifest in your life. For example, you know, in my walk with Christ, I've, I'm called to the, to, to the healing ministry and I've, see, I've seen many healings. Many, many, many healings. I don't keep count because all glory belongs to Him. But people sometimes come up to me in religion. They come up to me and they ask me, how does this happen? How does it happen? Well, simply, I explain and I, I, I tell them that I believe that the kingdom is within me and it is operational now. Not tomorrow, not when they die and go to heaven. That's the belief of religious people. I'm telling you now, kingdom is here and now. I have access and I have the authority or the dominion to bind or to lose, to bind the disease and to lose healing. We have the authority when we believe. The power is with the Lord. He wants us to exercise that authority, that dominion first given to Adam and then Jesus came and gave it back to us. That dominion we have to exercise, the authority in the physical man, in the physical world so that the invisible power from God will come and influence on earth as it is in heaven. Well, here's an example. If you, if you still don't get that, you say, where does it say in the Bible, Pastor Tom? Give me an example. Well, here's an example, okay? Jesus going back to Galilee. You remember that story? Many were sick, but he couldn't heal them. Why? Because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. Key word, I told you, is believing. Well, let me tell you another story. Here's a true story, okay? I was reading this in the news. Off the shores of the Philippines, a fisherman discovered a very large misshapen pearl. It was not pretty. It looked more like an ameba with blobs and folds everywhere. He took the unusual find home and he stored it under his bed for years, right? For 10 years to be precise, he had no use for it. And when he wanted to move one day, he gave it to the local tourism office. And you know what? It turned out to be the world's largest pearl. World's largest pearl. With an estimated worth of roughly 100 million US dollars. Guy had it under his bed. He didn't see the value of it. Why? Now we must ask the question why? Because it is easy to miss the value of something when it bears no resemblance to what we were thinking. Are you following me? Scripture tells us that good news of the kingdom is like a priceless pearl. Matthew 13, 45. But when it doesn't look like any pearl we've ever seen, if we're into religion, we cannot recognize kingdom. The pearl is worthless to you. You will store it under your bed for 10 years and then give it to the tourism center 
and then later on find out to be worth a hundred million US dollars. Why? <laughs> you know, remember, the Bible tells us not to throw pearls at pigs. You ever read that? You ever wonder why? Well, this is why. If you throw pearls at pigs, you just as well, might as well just throw like uh, pebbles at the pigs. No difference. If you have a handful of pearls and you throw it at the pigs, you can take a handful of, of pebbles and throw at the pigs and it'll be the same to the pigs because they cannot recognize the pearl. The value is, is no value to them. In fact, if you throw pearls at the pigs, they think you're trying to attack them. No wonder Jesus says they'll come and they'll, they'll thrash on it and they come and bite you and come after you. They'll come after you because you're attacking them. Something of value from the kingdom, the message of the kingdom to a religious person, it has no value and it looks like you're throwing something to attack them so they rebel. Hallelujah. <laughs> religion cannot recognize kingdom. To religion, kingdom is not valuable. That's why the religious leaders could not understand Jesus. Because it doesn't resemble in their mind, in their theology, heaven. There's a story in the gospel about a time when Jesus, in his ministry, he returned to his boyhood grounds of Nazareth. Do you remember that? Mark 6, chapter 1 to 6, NLT, I read to you. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then they scoff. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary and his brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went from village to village teaching the people. Throwing pearls at pigs. Kingdom is not religion. Religion is not kingdom. Religion cannot recognize kingdom. Yeah. I'm speaking to you, if you're listening to me right now. If you're still in religion, repent. So what happened? What happened when Jesus went back to Galilee? What happened? Nazareth. The people did not believe. Because why? Because to them, Jesus was just the carpenter's son. The brothers of Joseph, Judas, Simon, and James, and his sisters live among us. How can he have all this power and talk with authority like that? Who is he? Because Jesus doesn't look the part to religious people. So what happened? Nothing happened. Nothing happened because of their unbelief. When you don't believe, you have access to heaven, here and now, then the healing here and now is stalled. Yeah, you heard me. Why? Because Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 19 of the NLT, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. What does the key signify? Access. Access to the power, to the Holy Spirit, all powerful. No key, no access. 
The keys are here, brothers and sisters. Are we believing it? It's here and now. No wonder so many Christians are struggling today with wrong belief that the kingdom of heaven is a, it's, it's a later thing. It's later. When I die, then I go to heaven. No wonder they're not seeing what Jesus saw and what his disciples saw and what born-again Christians who believe that the kingdom is here now are seeing in their lives. Religion teaches us that kingdom of heaven, it's a later thing. When I go to heaven thing. But Jesus' message to the kingdom is now. It starts now when you believe. When you believe and authorize heaven, heaven invades earth right now. When you say yes to Jesus, you have the passport from heaven to access all of the power of heaven. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus was accessing heaven's power by authorizing what is to be bound and loosened. Remember I told you? Bind the disease, lose the healing. Simple as that. Do you believe it? That's the question. Do you believe that it's here and now? If you don't believe it's now, then the physical healing now is stalled. That relationship healing is postponed. That financial remedy deferred because you don't believe it now. Ladies and gentlemen, the kingdom of heaven is here and now when you believe. Jesus said in Mark 16, verse 16 to 18 of the NLT, he said this. Pay attention. Jesus speaking here, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. What I just read to you is what Jesus said to the believers. Believers. Are you a believer? Because even you believe, these things will happen, he says. The miraculous signs will accompany you. Have you seen any miracles lately? You will speak in new languages. Have you spoken in tongues lately? They will cast out demons in my name. Have you cast out a demon lately? They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. Have you experienced that? Because these things will accompany you when you believe. It defies logic. <laughs> logic is for people who are religious. God's kingdom defies logic. It is supernatural to a religious man. But to a kingdom person, it is natural. It is the way it is in the kingdom. What did Jesus say? Anyone who believes. I'm going to show you another verse from the Bible, okay? And if you haven't believed yet, my task as a guide to bring you to that belief. Jesus said again in Mark chapter 11, 23, 24, NLT. He said this, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you receive it, it will be yours. This is Jesus' words. Not the disciple, not John, not Paul, 
This is Jesus Christ speaking. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. It will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you receive it, it will be yours. Do you believe that you received the authority from God? Because if you believe that you receive it, it is yours. It's not complicated. It's a heart condition. You believe it or not? Believing in the kingdom of heaven, the rulership of heaven, the dominion of heaven, the power of heaven is here and now is the key. Not tomorrow, not later on, not when I die. It's here and now. Jesus was a man when he was walking on earth. His belief was here and now. That's the only time you can buy or lose and it will manifest. It will happen when you believe it's here and now. Why? Simply, if you don't believe you're a citizen of Canada, let's say in Canada, or if you don't believe you're a citizen of India, and when you are asked which country you're from, what would you say? That's right. <laughs> Same. If you don't believe you're a citizen of heaven now, you can call yourself a Christian, call yourself whatever, but I'm going to ask you this question. Are you a citizen of heaven? And if you don't believe that it's here and now, you say, oh yeah, it's later, then who are you right now? Who are you right now? I'm asking you right now. Check your heart. What are you right now? <laughs> if you're not a citizen of heaven, heaven is a later thing when you go to heaven. So what are you right now? All this time, because of your own, own unbelief, you nullify your rights and privileges as a citizen of heaven. Wow. Now do you understand why so many brothers and sisters suffer through hardships and diseases and even as I speak right now? Jesus is with you now. Not tomorrow. Now, when you believe in Him. And with Him is His kingdom. That's why He says the kingdom is within you. Oh, hallelujah. It's not later. It's not when you die. It's now. You and I have access because you and I have the Holy Spirit in us, the deposit of the glory of God in us. All power of God is in us. The fire of God is in us. Do not quench the fire. Let Him have His way. Now. So, Pastor, you say, why am I not seeing more of the kingdom of heaven manifest in my life? Some, may ask, some have asked me that. You know, I'm so passionate today. You know why? Because I want to guide you to the right believing. So many of us has been taught to be a good person in church, yes? We're taught that from kindergarten all the way from Sunday school. Change your behavior, change your outlook, change your lifestyle. That's all good. That's all good. Then we are asked to declare God's word in our lives. By the way, to declare is to agree. <laughs> and that's wonderful. I'm not knocking that. However, if there's one thing I want you to remember today through this video, remember this. There's one thing that Jesus taught us that is so vital, yet we miss it. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. That, my brother and sister, is authority. That is bonus. And that is a command. It is to command. It's a command for us to command. He's giving us that 
authority back that Adam lost. Here it is, guys. We have to command. In other words, it's a decree. It's a decree. Declaration is to agree. Decree is to command with authority to bind and to lose. Hallelujah. It's not just a declaration, but a decree, a command. How can I do that, Pastor? Good question. Or how can I even do that? Am I allowed? That's a good question too. Because the authority of the kingdom is given to you by Jesus. That's how. What Adam lost, Jesus gave back to us. The kingdom Adam lost, the kingdom is also the sovereign power to rule, by the way. That's what kingdom means. Sovereign power to rule. That's crazy. Sovereign power to rule. Listen, you and I, we are royal family. We belong to a royal kingdom. We are royalty. That's right. Did you know that a royal wagon is just a wagon? Yeah, a royal car is just a car. It became a royal wagon or a royal car because the royal owns it. Oh man, you don't get it, but I'm going to go more. A royal meal is just a meal. It became a royal meal because the royal is eating it. Do you get it now? Still don't get it? Royal people make things royal when they eat it, they own it, they use it, they wear it, and they live it. Things don't make you royal. A royalty makes things royal. Hallelujah, are you getting it? If you're sitting in your little, I don't know, a veil car or a Honda Fit, that's a royal wagon because you're royalty. Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't have to wait till you get a, I don't know, a big giant SUV, you know, over 100,000. No, that's, that's more royal. No. No. You are royalty. Whatever you touch, it's royal. It's kingdom. The kingdom of God. No sickness. No poverty. Nobody struggling. No tears. Nobody crying. But you got to know that you're royalty. You got to know that you're royalty. That you shift and you change atmosphere when you show up. Because the glory of God is in you and in me. He is the Holy Spirit. All power has showed up. Demons scream. Did you know that? Everywhere Jesus went, demons scream. Son of God, why are you here? Because why? That place has become holy ground. That place has been set apart as a royal ground. The unholy are not supposed to be in the royal ground. That's why they're screaming. Things don't make you royal. A royalty makes things royal. Remember that. So the realm you're in, the territory you're in, whether it's your home, your office, your car, your gym, becomes royal when you show up. That's right. Next time you're in your gym, exercising, you tell people, I'm royalty. These weights right now, they're royal weights. That's right. Jesus says, believe that you receive already and you shall have. So be bold. Know that the Holy Spirit, the power of God is in you and with you. Now and here. So let him out. He wants to do the will of the Father in and through us now and here. Amen? So I hope this helped you understand 
better that you have the authority in the name of Jesus to exercise the power of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And that's a decree, by the way. Remember, you learn what a decree is. It's a command. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So start today. Okay, don't delay. It's here now. So this is Pastor Tom saying, see you next time. Bless you and bless your family.